Alzheimer's. And you know when you get older, you, you forget things. So I want you to judge me. If the brother was right and I insulted the minister, I will apologize because I had no intent to uh, insult somebody who I admire at all. So you listen to the video. It's at the very beginning. It's, the, it's, it's a video series. It's uh, seven videos. But I believe what he's talking about is part one. Because you know folks don't really like. They can't listen a whole hour. <laughs> you know. Well some of y'all can. It's according to what's being said. But anyway he's tripping off. When I was talking about in the video. I was complaining about. Not getting that interview with Brother Farrakhan. And he said that I said that Brother Farrakhan himself denied me the interview. I did not say that. I said there were those around Brother Farrakhan who knew that I wanted that interview. That made no effort to help me get the interview. That's what I said. And I said, those people have some type of a problem. Because I'm very sure if Brother Farrakhan knew I wanted 10 minutes with him, I'm pretty sure he would have done it. What's the big deal? But see, you have those who are glory hounds. This is, you know, it's, it's like uh, you got a woman and she's just so fine and everything. And you get jealous. You don't want nobody else to have a part of it. You know that feeling. So you have these, these people. That are like that. Then another factor is. That brother Donald that I was telling you about. That brother has always had a problem really with me. He may treat me nice to a certain point. But he, ha he has always had a problem with me. Because I always been different. I was a follower of Elijah Muhammad. Under Brother Farrakhan. But I always thought for myself. I always questioned things. I was always different. And I challenged their authority. Because that's what Elijah Muhammad taught me. He taught me as a fruit of Islam. As a FOI. He told me not to be a robot. Fast moving. Quick thinking right down to the modern times. I'm not nobody's robot. Yours are nobody's. I question. Elijah Muhammad said he can be questioned. So I question Elijah. Since he's not here that I question your ass. And because you bring an answer and you think I'm just supposed to accept it. Not happening. It's not adequate. Brother Donald also knows I view him as a coward. I view him as a coward. And other things. Incompetent man. Glory how He knows these things. See, you don't know him. Don't tell me about, about this man. I work with him. You wasn't around. None of y'all was. So of course. You don't want me. To get an interview. With brother Farrakhan. It was that type of mentality. So here goes the captain. Who don't know nothing. And so I asked the brother. What did I say. That was an insult to the minister. Why, why are you here. You insulted the minister. I'm here because I like. Being here is the nation of Islam is where I come from. I was invited here. I sacrificed. I gave up my time to help build this and get this so it could be in existence. I stood in front of Louis Farrakhan willing to take a bullet. And then, and but it's a problem. My family who brought me and, and uh, was introduced me to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. My relatives gave thousands of dollars. And myself. Thousands of dollars. Hours and hours 
because of time. And this is how you're going to teach me. You're going to run up on me and accuse me of insulting the minister. And then I ask the brother, what did I say? He's going to tell me, you, you know what you said. No. Do you know how many videos I make? No, I don't know what I said. What did I say? Here's the, the captain of the FOI claiming the supreme wisdom, accusing me of something, and don't even know what I said. You should be embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for you. Because you claim you're so intelligent, you have the supreme wisdom, la di da la di da and you accuse somebody of something and can't bring no damn evidence. Let's go look it up on the computer. You shouldn't have to look nothing up on no computer. Whatever I said, tell me. Can't tell me nothing. So he gets to screaming and hollering at me and puts his body into my car. I'm getting ready. I'm inside my car with the engine running, getting ready to leave. The brothers surround my car. I got FOI around the car. Intimidating. My heart racing. Because I know the mentality of these people, they might try to hurt me. So there's a tense situation. I'm watching his every move. I'm watching their every move. I have only one defense. If they try to like snatch me out the car or harm me, I have no choice but to take that car and run them over. That's what would have happened. This man disrespect me, hollering and screaming. And then can't even produce the insult. Listen to the video yourself. I don't insult nobody. I will talk about your ideology, your opinion, or whatever. I don't talk about people's mama. I don't call you uneducated and foolish. I don't do that. If you show me any video where I do that, I will take it down. I'm not into childish name calling. This man cannot even tell me. I'll tell you something. See, this man is the example of the rest of the FOI. Bad example. I tell you this. This is a poor captain. This man can get those brothers seriously hurt if they follow. But see, woo, I'm so happy for the creation because while the incident was going on, I'm trying to maintain my cool. I'm looking at the eyes of some of those FOI, and a lot of them did not approve. Especially when I said I was willing to take a bullet for Louis Farrakhan. A lot of them start looking at him crazy. I'm here. I donate to your temple. I buy your newspapers. I work Seven years so you can have this. I sacrifice. This how you treat me? Those brothers start looking at him. Because this man has gone insane. He's a madman. He reminds me. <clears throat> excuse me. He reminds me of this brother that was a lieutenant. Lieutenant is next to captain. We were. In front of the mosque one day, one night, and it was a sister walking with a white fellow down the street, and the brother lieutenant said, "Look at that devil walking with one of our sisters." And so he suggested to us that we beat the white guy up, and. Uh, I spoke out and I said to him, what's the purpose of that? You want to beat the white guy up for what? So the sister can run down to the nearest pay phone, call 911, and then the police come, arrest our ass, throw our ass in jail, and then nobody has no money.
money for no bail. Who knows how long somebody going to sit around. What's the benefit? When we sitting in jail and that sister still going to be with the white guy. Who cares? And the brother going to tell me, you being insubordinate? You're damn skippy. Because that's stupid. I'm not going to jail over that nonsense. There's no benefit. And so he looking at me and he decided to change his mind. You should have never thought that way to begin with. You're a damn fool. And here's a man 10 or 12 years older than me. Thinking crazy. So here's the captain of the Nation of Islam in St. Louis hollering and screaming, throwing spit all in my car over nothing. Something you can't even prove. What's the benefit? But there's a detriment because if I was not me, what you have gained is an enemy. You gained somebody who won't support you no more. And you want to try to be tough. Then some, you ain't the only one that can get tough. But see, I thought I was a place of peace. So if I go to a church, and I go to a synagogue, and I go to a mosque, I don't expect violence. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I got to get a drink on that one, y'all. <laughs> you don't expect to get jumped on in a place of peace, do you? The worst thing that could have happened 